Hi, it's Rich from Planet PE and I'm back again after the summer break and trying to show lots and lots of new content on GCSE PE. So if you don't already, please make sure you like and subscribe and click the subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss any of the videos along the way. Now normally, Thursday is my upload day so I'll try and keep that all the same all the time so that you guys know exactly when you're gonna be able to get some content. So let's see what we can do today. So today's video is all about the skeleton. So we're gonna have a look at how joints are formed, the different joints that you need to know in your GCCP exam, and the structure and the function of the skeleton. So along the way, we'll just try and get a few exam questions out so we can see the sort of things that you're gonna to need to do in your GCCP exam this year or next year if you are one of the year 10s. So let's start with the skeleton. So there are about 16 bones that you need to know. So if you have a look at all the diagrams that you will see in your P lessons, you will understand exactly where they are and all those different bones, fantastic. What you really need to understand is what bones make up which joint. So in the body, we've got the head and the neck joint, the shoulder, chest, elbow, hip, knee, and ankle. So we need to know the bones that make those up. So if we start kind of top down, that's probably the best way. So in the neck, or the head joint, we have the cranium and we have the vertebrae, okay? So where the, where the cranium is gonna sit on top of the vertebrae, so the skull, but we have to call it the cranium, is gonna be sitting on top of those vertebrae, that is forming our head and neck joint. So an example of where that joint is gonna move is let's say heading a football. The, the, the work I'm gonna put on my neck joint is gonna cause the uh, football to have more force on it. We've then got the shoulder joint. So the shoulder joint is what we call a ball and socket joint. So it has a ball and then a socket. So what we have is that I've got my shoulder joint, which is made up of my humerus and the scapula. So you think about the big movements that you see with swimmers, about people bowling in cricket, all of those are possible because of all those movements that we can do at the shoulder joint where the humerus and the scapula meet. You then got the chest joint okay so there's a joint in the chest because we've got where two bones meet so it might seem that lots of these different joints are about movement but not all of them are so in the chest we've got our ribs and our sternum so the sternum is the breastplate the bone that you have in the middle of your chest that are then joined by the ribs now that isn't a joint that's going to move particularly because it's not one that we want to move and we'll look at why that is in a second we've then got the elbow joint so earlier on we said the humerus, or well the humerus carries on going all the way down to then meet where we call our elbow joint. Now in that joint, we've got where the radius and the ulna, so the radius is the one which is kind of on top, the ulna is the ones underneath, okay, where they meet the humerus. So that means that at that, that joint, which is what we call a hinge joint, we can then create movements like flexion and extension. We then carry on moving down the body into the hip joint. So the hip is the second example of a ball and socket. So we've got our femur, which where that meets the, the sort of pelvic girdle, so where the pelvis meets the humerus. And that's what forms your hip. So the fact that you're able to kick a football, the fact you're able to run, is because of that movement which is possible at the hip joint. Carry on going down, we're then onto the knee. So the knee is, again, a slightly different type of joint, again, what we call a hinge joint, and that is where your femur is gonna meet your tibia. Now, we've got our tibia, which you, know, you kind of might think is your shin bone, okay? So that big, that big bone at the front of your leg. So that is gonna meet the femur. Now, on top of that, we also have the patella. So what you guys would think about is your kneecap. So the patella just sits on top, okay? So there's three bones that essentially create that joint. And the final one is our ankle. So our ankle is where our tibia and our fibula, so both of the bones in the lower leg, meet the talus. So the talus is a bone which kind of allows your foot to connect to your leg, essentially. So that is where we've got that joint. Now, in your exam, you might be asked something like, name two bones in the lower arm. So you think your radius and your ulna. You might be asked the bones which make up the shoulder joint. You might be asked the bones which make up the knee joint. So you're only really gonna get some quick recall action about those types of, those types of uh, questions or those types of information. So have a look at the diagram that we've got just up on here and make sure that you learn those different bones, the locations and the joints which meet, which, uh, meet sorry, which are created 
by where the bones meet. So those bones all are categorized into different types. So those different types of bones correlate to what we call the structure of the skeleton. So we've got five different aspects that kind of make up the structure of the skeleton. So as I said a second ago about joints, so where two bones meet is what we kind of call a joint. Now within there, one of the structure points that you would need to be able to talk about is the fact that your skeleton allows movement at a joint. So muscles don't move, bones move because they're pulled by muscles, which is then creating movement at the joint. So your first point there is all about the skeletal system allows movement at a joint. Now within your skeleton as well, one of the really interesting things is the fact that you are the shape or the size you are because of your skeleton. So the shape and the different um, types of bones determine the amount of movement that is kind of possible. So we've got things called long bones. So an example of a long bone would be your humerus or your femur. And those long bones allow what we call gross movement, so really big movements. So the fact you're able to walk, you can throw, you're able to swim, those big movements that almost move your entire body are what we call gross movements. And they're caused by the fact we have these long bones. We've also then got some what we call short bones. Now those short bones are for kind of tiny little movements. So you think when you write, it's not a very big movement, it's kind of short movements. So it's what we call fine movements. So they're caused by short bones. So a good example would be that if I am swimming, I'm gonna be doing lots of really big movements from the shoulder using those long bones. But when I just slightly change my hand position getting in the water, that's gonna be from using those shorter bones because they're doing fine skills or fine movements. So we've got long bones which create gross movements and short bones which allow those fine movements. We then have what we call flat bones. So flat bones are things that are gonna help you to protect your vital organs. So you're gonna get thick questions such as uh, describe how the cranium uh, is used to protect uh, a vital organ in a game of football. So you would be asked to talk about how the cranium is a flat bone and it protects the brain from damage when heading a football. So you need to know all the different flat bones. So we've got things like the sternum, which are gonna protect the heart. We've got the ribs, which are gonna protect the lungs. We've got the cranium, which is gonna protect the brain. So we've got those types of uh, bones that you have to be aware of so that you understand that there's a protection factor or a protection function that is there in the skeleton. We then have um, different types of joints, which allow for different types of movements. So all of your different joints are able to do lots and lots of different movements. So hinge joints can only do what we call flexion and extension. So what you think about as bending or straightening the arm, but we have to use those correct terms. We've also got the shoulder joint, which is able to do lots and lots of different movements. Now that's great because it now allows us to do lots of different sporting actions. The final thing to think about is that your muscles are attached to your bones. So the reason that we're able to move is because we have a site for muscle attachment. So the fact that we are able to move, the fact we're able to go and play sport, we can do all these different movements, is because we have a structure that allows that to happen. So my bones have muscles on them and those muscles then pull on the bone to allow the movement at the joint. So that is the how, how we're kind of structured. So we've got these different types of bones. We've got long bones for gross movement, short bones for, uh, for smaller movements or fine movements, flat bones for protection. And then also we've got these points of attachment for the muscles to actually enable movement to happen at the joint. So that leads us on to our six functions of the skeleton. So basically kind of what the skeleton actually does. So there are six functions. They are support, protection, movement, structural shape and points of attachment, mineral storage, and blood cell production. So let's go through each one of them nice and quickly. So support. So your body is actually supported by the skeleton. The fact that we can stand upright or have a particular posture is because of the, the skeleton. So when you're uh, running, the fact you can stand in a, the correct technique, the fact that when you kick a football, you can stand nice and tall so you get power through it, is because we have the support of our skeleton. So essentially, think about it, if you didn't have a skeleton, 
you would be just a ball of mess. You'd be a blob. Your organs would be everywhere. Your muscles wouldn't be able to attach to anything. So you wouldn't actually have the, the, the support that we have. The second one is protection. So we just kind of talked about that in the little bit a second ago where we talked about the, um, the when we talked about the structure of the skeleton. So some of these terms are gonna be kind of interchangeable when we talk about structure, when we talk about function. So function of protection is the fact that we have certain parts of the body, particularly the vital organs, protected by certain bones. So we know that now that they are flat bones, which are gonna be protecting. So without those, um, those flat bones protecting our vital organs, it means that when we're playing sport, when we're moving around, that just simple collisions could cause us some pretty bad ways really. So we'd be in a, a bit of a bad way if I was playing football, if I was head of football and I didn't have a cranium. So it's helping us to be healthy. It's helping us to be active because we're not going to risk any injury from, from quite menial things. Movement we talked about. So movement obviously is going to happen at a joint because we know that we're going to be pulling on the bones to create movement. So one of the functions of the skeleton is about movement. And again, movement, as we said earlier, happens at the joint. We've then got this idea of structural shape and points of attachment. So as we said earlier, the fact that muscle can attach to bone and it pulls on there means that we're gonna have these different points of attachment for the muscles. It also gives our structural shape. So the fact that you are tall or small means that you've got smaller or larger frames. You've got a bigger or smaller skeleton. We've then got mineral storage. So in your bones, you will also know that we've got calcium. So you know most people know that in primary school. We've also got something called phosphorus. So those are both there and are able to be taken by the body when it's needed. So for instance, if you had a slight bit of damage in your muscle, in your, um, in your bone, sorry, the calcium would be deposited to then mean that your bone can heal quite quickly. The final thing is blood cell production. So with our blood cells um, going around the body, we know we've got white blood cells, we've got red blood cells, they are created in the bone. So they're things that are gonna carry oxygen so we can be nice and nice and healthy, nice and fit. We can then go and exercise. We can go and get around, uh, around the football pitch when we need to. And also we're gonna be able to fight infection because those blood cells are being created by the bones. So there are six functions of the body there. So support, protection, movement, structural shape and points for attachment, mineral storage and blood cell production. So we've got to try and find a way where we're going to remember all those, which is a lot of information. I get it. So if you think about the functions, there's six functions, there's five aspects of the structure of the skeleton, and then there's those different joints. So I would go away if it was me, and I would have a look at the quiz below. So there is a website called Senenka Learning. So if you go on there uh, and type in the um, type in the link, create an account, and then from there you can then attack the questions. So I would start by looking at the functions and the structure of the skeleton to see if you can then understand what I've talked about today and then help yourselves in your learning. So thanks very much for watching guys. I will see you again next week when we carry on looking at the Sonova joints and the movements possible at a joint. So again, please like and subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, Let's get more followers because along the way we'll do lots of cool things like some lives and then try and get some interactions with you. So in the comments, guys, if you want these videos to be different, if you want some more interactions, then please, please tell us so we can try and help you out. Enjoy. See you next week.